Let's talk about optimization bias or overfitting of the validation set. You might be wondering why do we need to evaluate the model on the test set in the end? Why do we split the data into train split and test split at the beginning, carry out cross validation only on the train split, and finally evaluate the best model on the test split? Why don't we use the full data set for cross validation? If we have more data for cross validation, that should be better, right? So why don't we use the full data set for cross validation and use the cross validation error as a proxy for the deployment error? The point is that while carrying out hyperparameter optimization, we usually try over many, many possibilities. And even though validation splits in each fold are not going to influence the training directly, they are going to influence this hyperparameter optimization process. If our data set is small, our validation sets are going to be small, and they are going to hit too many times when we carry out hyperparameter optimization. When that happens, we might suffer from optimization bias or overfitting of the validation set. We have talked about optimization bias of parameter learning before, that is overfitting of the training error. For example, suppose you are training a decision tree classifier on a limited amount of training data that's given to you. During training, you are learning the parameters, and during this process, you could search over tons of different decision trees. While doing that, you might get lucky and find a tree that works really well on the training data, but it doesn't generalize well on the validation data or the test data and that is overfitting of the training error. Overfitting can also occur during hyperparameter learning, that is when you tune hyperparameters. When you carry out hyperparameter optimization using methods such as grid search CV, you usually try out many different possibilities. For example, if you are carrying out hyperparameter optimization for a decision tree classifier, you might try over thousands of values of the max depth hyperparameter. Now, one of these trees might have low validation error just by chance. But when you use that particular hyperparameter value and train a model on the full training set and try it out on the test set, then you realize that your model is not really generalizing well. So the cross validation error that you got is not consistent with what you get with the test set. So basically the cross validation error is not representative of the test error and that is overfitting of the validation error. Let me demonstrate optimization bias on the Spotify data set. This is not a very realistic example but it's good enough to demonstrate the phenomenon. So what I'm doing here is this is our original Spotify data set, X Spotify and Y Spotify. And I'm splitting the data so that most of the data is in the test split. Okay, my test size is 0 0.99. So my training data is going to be very tiny. I only have 20 rows in the training data. And this is how my training data looks like. Now, since in our Spotify data set, we have features on different scales, I am creating a pipeline with first step as a standard scaler and second step as SVC classifier. So this is our pipeline. Now I'm carrying out hyperparameter optimization. We have two hyperparameters, gamma and C for our SVC classifier. And for each of these, I'm trying out 30 different values. So in total, we are going to have 900 different combinations to try. These are different values for C and gamma. And I'm carrying out random search using these 900 values. And I'm using n iter equal to 900 so that it carries out 900 different experiments. And this is what our random search found. It found the best cross validation score of 0.8 with gamma equal to zero and C equal to one billion. So one might claim that we found a model that performs with 0 0.8 accuracy on this particular data set. The question is, do we really believe that? Do we really believe that 0 0.8 accuracy is generalizable? And are these hyperparameter values 
optimal hyperparameter values. So let's try this out on the test set. We have carried out hyperparameter optimization on the training data, and we know the best hyperparameter values now. Let's check whether these hyperparameter values generalize well on the test data. And what do we see here? No, the results are not really generalizable. Our cross-validation accuracy was 0 0.8, and our test accuracy is only 0 0.616. So this is overfitting of the validation error. We are finding a model that performs well during cross-validation. We are finding a model that gives us the best cross-validation accuracy. But when we try it out on the test set, then the accuracy is quite low. And this is happening because our training set is really, really small. We only have 20 rows in our training set. And when we carry out cross-validation, the validation set is going to be tiny. and the validation sets are going to hit many, many times because we are carrying out 900 different cross-validation experiments on this particular data set. And we are getting lucky in some scenario where we are getting best cross-validation results, but the results are not generalizable on the test set. In this particular example, I'm exaggerating a little bit because I want to demonstrate the phenomenon to you. And you might wonder whether this really happens in real life or not. Although you are likely to have more than 20 examples in your training set in real life scenarios, overfitting of the validation error is not that uncommon and you should always be careful about it. In fact, that's why we usually have the test set to do the final assessment of our model. And in this particular case, we can actually trust the test results because our test data is of good size. Remember, when we split the data, we put 99% of the data in the test split. So we have around 2,000 examples in the test split. This picture kind of demonstrates what might be happening in our scenario. On the x-axis in this graph, I have a hyperparameter, some hypothetical hyperparameter. We are sweeping through this hyperparameter, and we are plotting training and validation accuracies that is cross-validation accuracies. So on the y-axis, we have accuracies. This blue curve is our training curve. So for hyperparameter values greater than, say, 60, we are getting pretty good training accuracy. This orange curve is our idealized generalization curve. So we will have underfitting somewhere here, overfitting here, and sweet spot somewhere here. But instead of this idealized generalization curve, when we carry out cross-validation and plot cross-validation results for different hyperparameter values, we get these green spikes. And these green spikes, they are not at all smooth. And they seem to be very, very sensitive to the changes in the hyperparameter values. For example, for the hyperparameter value of 20, we seem to be getting very low accuracy. But if we increase the hyperparameter value a little bit, then we seem to be getting pretty good accuracy. And this is what might have happened in our scenario. In our case, we carried out random search to find optimal hyperparameter values. Our random search gave us hyperparameter values, which gave us the best cross-validation scores. Suppose this red dot represents the best cross-validation accuracy. Now, in our case, what happened was that we got this best cross-validation accuracy, but it was not really representative of the test accuracy. When we train our model on the full data set using these optimal hyperparameters, and when we evaluate it on the test set, we did not really get good accuracy. So suppose this purple dot represents our test accuracy. So basically, what do we see here? We just got lucky with our cross-validation accuracy, but it's not really representative of the test accuracy. In our case, this primarily happened because of the size of the training data. Our training data was really, really tiny. The overall point here is that we cannot always trust the cross-validation accuracy and the ability of cross-validation to pick the best or optimal hyperparameter values. And that's why we need a test set. 
In supervised machine learning pipelines, at the beginning of the pipeline, we usually split the data into train split and test split. We keep aside the test split. We do not let it influence the training phase in any way. We train our model and fine tune our model using the train split. Once we feel confident about our model, we carry out final assessment of the model on the test split. If the test results more or less agree with the cross-validation results, we feel fine about our model. We feel okay to deploy it. But if they do not agree with each other, if there is a big gap between cross-validation results and the test results, then we are in the scenario of overfitting the validation set. And we know that our model is not really going to generalize well, and we can do something about the model before we deploy it. And that's why we keep aside this test set. Now, the frustrating part here is that all these problems are likely to happen when you have a small data set. And when you have a small data set, your test set is going to be small. So those results are not going to be that reliable. Also, validation splits in your cross validation are going to be small. So if you have a small data set, you are in this frustrating situation and you don't really have many alternatives. What do you actually do when your test score is much lower than the cross validation score? You spend lots of time on building your model, fine tuning your model. You have a model you feel confident about, but when you assess your model on the test set, you find out that the test score is much lower than your cross validation score. What do you do? I would go back and reduce complexity of the model. I would try simpler models, which are likely to generalize well. Also, I have been telling you to use the test set only once for final assessment of the model. But in scenarios like this, it's OK to use the test set a couple of times. So I would go back, try different models, and carry out assessment, carry out final assessment on the test set again. Finally, the most important thing is to communicate this clearly when you report your results. If you are in this situation of overfitting the validation set, you need to communicate this clearly so that your company can make decisions about deployment. Large data sets solve many of these problems. If you have a large data set, your test set is going to be of good size. Also, your validation splits in cross validation are going to be of good size. So your scores are likely to be better and more robust. So if you are in this situation of overfitting the validation set, one way to go would be collecting more data if you have the time and resources. That said, this is not always feasible. In general, this problem of overfitting the validation set is a tricky problem. It is good to be aware of this problem. But unfortunately, there are not many good alternatives or solutions to this problem.